Hello again. I just got cut off. And experience tells me I will not be able to splice these two videos together. So, welcome to part two of this week's wholly regular ECY Shedcast. I've no idea why part one randomly cut me off mid-sentence. Thanks, phone. Um, I guess maybe to do with... No, my battery's fine. So maybe to do with um, storage? I don't know. Anyway, hopefully it'll let me record the rest of it. Um, and I hope you've stuck with me into part two. Um, I, I'll, I'll try and get a move on. Like I said at the beginning of part one, there's a lot there's a lot to tell you about we have a lot going on um right so i was just i was just doing um color combinations with the rosedale four ply and to be honest i think i was pretty much done with that anyway um let me just oh let me just put i can see in this box i've got i don't know if you can see it no it's out of shot there i've got whispering grass then brick then um chestnut because it, it looks more greenish over there than it does over here and then hedgerow did i say chestnut hedgerow yeah i've got those in a box next to each other and i actually really like that i think that's just yeah it's calling to me as these things do so right that's color combinations um there are more on flicker as i said earlier in part one so um I will stop with those for now. Right. Uh, other things in the update. I've got mini skein fade kits. Charcoal and clematis. Or clematis. I've always said clematis, but I know a lot of people say clematis. Either way, that thing. Um, so these are sets of five mini skeins. It's the same Rosedale four ply, so it's with the gold sparkle. The reason for these is um, in aid of Helder's transference shawl, transference, transference shawl, that um, in inside crochet. It's uh, the latest issue. Um, they've been talking about it again on Instagram today. So have a look at inside crochet if you haven't done check them out on Instagram. They've got loads of gorgeous stuff. And um, so this is Helda Shawl and she uses the fade and yeah, to go from, from dark to light across the shawl. And um, I'm trying to picture it now. I can see it and I, do you know, I can't remember if it's got little pom-poms on. I have a feeling that it probably does. Um, so yeah, so that's why we've got these um, little fade kits so they add up to 100 grams obviously um what else do we have oh right this is a good one let me just make sure that the camera's on all the things i need it to be on so the other thing is pendle chunky now i've just i have just got a handful because i had a load of it undyed it's been sat in the dye shed since February. Um, I got loads of it because we were releasing cat mates and there were chunky projects in it, in the book. There's a whole chunky section. And we were planning to do, um, in March when it was released, we were planning to do um, a pop-up shop um, with the hand dyed pendle chunky, you see. But of course everything got cancelled and so i never died up this pendle chunky and it's been sat all summer waiting calling to me and the whole time i'd be like oh is it is it too early yet is it too early yet anyway finally it's cold enough so pendle chunky right now this one in fact i'm going to take the label off so you can see the whole skein it's a dye pot look. Let me just check that. Oh no, I've marked it as a cottage original actually because I want to try and um, replicate it because I love it. And I know it's speckles and I don't normally do proper actual speckles, but I have done and I love them. And I love this yarn and I love the colours and I just love it. So I hope that you do too because I'd really like to try and make more of this. I hope I wrote down what I did. I have a feeling that I did. 
Um, so that's Cottage Original. So that is, oh, it's so squishy, this yarn. It's just, can you see that texture? Oh, it's just, it is lovely. We love this yarn. I've also done a newish colourway called Heather. Um, where, when I was in Scotland in August, we don't normally holiday in August, you see. We would normally holiday in October or November, but we went in August just because the way this year has panned out. And obviously there was loads and loads of heather everywhere. In fact, I could I could smell the pollen from it, which I've never noticed before. But it wasn't just purple heather. There was a lot of pink heather too. Um, and then, of course, you've got like the yellows and browns of, of the um, like the branches, you know, the undergrowth. Um, so that's why it's yeah, it's heather, but it's not just plain purple. There's a lot more to it than that. And again, just love that colorway. And look at those two together. How's that for a happy accident? But it gets better. I also did salvia, which is to my mind, that's a proper purple. And Wuddlier, because I wanted to do the two and compare them just because of recipe and dye information stuff, um, which is the more pinky purple, Buddleia. But I mean, oh, right. So you really want the Buddleia next to the pinky bits and then the Salvia next to the purpley bits. Okay. So those are the, oh, and I've done Chestnut, because I mean, I had to do Chestnut and Chunky, didn't I? Look at it. Oh just gorgeous so i think that that works with the heather because it pulls out the sand in the heather but you can see that all right so and also i love it next to the purple i think that looks so cool um the contrast on that is just fantastic but also there's we've still got some quite old very old um uh pendle chunky in stark and look at that how gorgeous is that so this uh, these older dye lots of pendle chunky are on sale to clear obviously the brand new stuff isn't clearly but um check those out together oh that is the stuff right there um so do have a look at the older pendle chunky as well there's not a lot in that's why it's on sale to clear but um because of aforementioned um cancellations there is also an absolute ton of pendle chunky in silver birch um so you'll find that alongside the sand and i think a couple of other um colorways now the pendle chunky in silver birch was for this i, I don't know whether i've shown you this before but i'm wearing it anyway so because it's cold out um, so this is the Katniss Chunky Jumper from the book and oh if I can get far enough away can you just see that little um, cat on the hip and then there's cats on the sleeves as well so if you want to make this and you like this colourway um, have a look at the Pendle Chunky because like I say the silver birch there's a bit of steel um, and a few other colourways that are on sale to clear and you can get jumper quantities of this um, and actually while I'm on Chunky oh, I've got so much to tell you while I'm on Chunky there's also um, my Brig hat pattern which we have re-released um, with new pictures um, because I knitted one up in Pendle Chunky and Silver Birch um, it shows the cable off really nicely it's quite a nice um, beginner's hat pattern, I think, because it's chunky, so it's nice and quick. You can see the stitches really nicely. And it's just got the one simple cable going up the side. So, you know, it's just enough. Um, so that, so yeah, Brig hat pattern. That's Brig with two Gs on the end. Um, Okay, whilst I'm still on Chunky, I'm just going to move on to the Whitfell Chunky because it's this time of year again now. Um, this is what I'm wearing, actually. Oh, I, I forgot about this scarf. I was digging around in the sample cupboard um, before I came out to film this 
and I just saw this and was like oh yes I should definitely wear that um it's you know it's dark blue it's quite easy to overlook when you're looking through a cupboard but actually it is just lovely because can you see how it's like mild that's that's the actual yarn appearance like it's like that so that's how it knits up I mean I love a mild yarn so I thought I'd wear this I'll keep it out now until next summer um and the reason that I made this scarf it is literally just a garter stitch scarf I made this because we were constantly being asked at shows usually how many how many would I need to make a scarf with so I was like, well, there's only one way to answer that question, isn't there? I have to make one. Um, so this is quite, an, quite a wide scarf, because you don't want it too skinny, do you? You want it to be nice and squishy. I'm not even sure how many stitches it is, but I can probably look it up. Um, and it, it is literally just garter stitch. Three skeins is the answer. And I think you, you could get away with two, but it would probably be about that sort of length um so three for me i would say and the whitfield chunky again this is pure baby alpaca by the way it is so soft and squishy um it's not as it's kind of you know you think it's going to be really heavy and it'll drop it's it's kind of not not as much as you think it's got a lot more bounce and a lot more structure than you think it will have um and to me it doesn't feel heavy to wear at all so that's what it felt chunky so i'm just telling you about that because obviously there's a time of year but also this is on sale to clear as well um and these are the colors that we've got left that i really wanted to show you so you've got silhouette okay and then another mild one which is tulip some of them are in skeins and some are in balls but it is all the same stuff so that's tulip another mild one and then we've got echinacea which is a lovely pink soft dusky pink um sand pretty self-explanatory i think um coal and actually i have something in coal here um just to segue into in a minute so that's coal proper jet black and then natural which is just undyed it's not bleached or anything so it's just the natural cream which is lovely and then damson which is a lovely classic purple you can see the shine on that there as well so um i really like sand and damson together just show you these i'll tell you what i really love i love the softness of these two colors together natural and sand um, I think they're absolutely lovely. You could go for ooh, silhouette and black and coal. Uh, and then you could add damson in. So I just thought I'd remind you of those really because obviously they're quite seasonal. You know, the chunkies, it is seasonal really. Um, whew, God, I'm knackered from all this thinking. It's wearing me out. Right. Before I finish, I've got just a few more chunky um, project ideas for you. So first of all, let me just see if I can show you this. Now that I've nicely pinned it up, I don't want to unpin it again. That is called Maya's Shawl, M-A-Y-A. -A. Can you see that? Um, that's by Justina Lukowska, a.k.a. Uh, Leet's Knits or Letty's Knits I think it's Letty's um, Knits should probably tell me they're both wrong <laughs> I'm sure you know who I mean anyway um, and I shall link to to that so that's a Ma that's Maya's shawl and that takes three skeins of chunky as well you see which is why it got me thinking about it and that was the coal I think it's three anyway but I'm sure it's three double check on the pattern um but yeah if you want something nice and cozy um you you could totally make a shawl with chunky it doesn't just have to be for hats and um jumpers 
and um, scarves. You can make like an actual lacy shawl. That was my point. Um, and I've just got a few more bits of pattern inspiration that I wanted to share with you um, for the pendle chunky because quite honestly, I don't, if I don't do this, I don't get a whole lot of chance to show off um, all the samples that we've made. And the whole purpose of making them is to be able to show them off and share the inspiration. So why not? So thank you for still being here and still being with me anyway. The first thing is um, these. These are my Langrig mitts, fingerless mitts, um, made in a skein of pendle chunky. They look, t I know they look tiny, but I have um, thin wrists and quite long, thin hands. And I like my fingerless mittens to be a really close fit. I hate baggy fingerless mittens. I can't bear them. Um, so that's that's why they look they look tiny, but they're not really. And then obviously I can do that when it's cold. So that's great for dog walking. This colorway is called Frog Prince. You might remember it from last year. Um, it, there's probably none left at the moment, but well, I hope there's not. Um, but I'm thinking I shall do some more as a seasonal special this this year, um, probably next month. So that's those. So that's Langrig there on our website. There's also Fell Cider Cowl. Again, great for dog walking. By Tracy Todd Hunter. That's available on our website. It takes one skein of chunky. Um, that's quite nice and structured as well so it will sit against your neck which i like um also on our website this uh is it this is a free pattern i said no it's a free pattern on our blog so yeah on the website but on the blog and um, this is our wharf headband wharf or wharfdale i'm sure if you type in headband you will find it um, and that's done in the colourway A Murder of Crows on Pendle Chunky, which I really like. And again, I will be doing some more of this. But it's just a little headband just to keep your ears warm. Um, I I just came up with it when I ha still had hair long enough to wear in a ponytail. Um, so, yeah, that's why there's that. It's free. It's just a pattern on the blog because obviously it's, it's just a headband. But again, pattern inspiration. This one is by another one by Louise Tilbrook, actually. This is her coffee break cowl. I'm sure it's, I'm sure that's what it was called. I checked before I came in and I've forgotten already. So it's a coffee break cowl, Louise Tilbrook. Um, if you look her up, you'll find it. But this is Pendle Chunky held together with a strand of Eldwick lace, which is our mohair. So that, is another different texture again it's very soft and cozy it's very lovely and actually with it being chunky you can see the mohair the strands which i think is really cool hopefully you can see how fluffy that is okay so that's that that again that's one scheme and then the final thing this um i made this i think it was a couple of years ago now i'm sure it was yeah i don't think i made it last year anyway this which is really cool um it's called lush brioche cowl by cassandra rizardi okay so you'll have to look that up but i'll i'll pop a link in as well um and so oh yeah so i used um a murder of crows for this darker um contrast color which is why i then had some left over to make that with that's what that was and then i used a dye pot look for the this colorful colorway um i absolutely love this cowl and it, it looks quite i know it looks a bit thin but the brioche is really squishy i mean brioche in that it's so squishy but actually i'm gonna to have to take this off out hang on oh gosh my neck's cold now if i pop that over there 
if I pop this over my head, don't get it caught in my earrings. <sighs> nope, that is caught in my earring. You can see it's actually really, really cosy and squishy. So that under coat, without the label on, obviously, is nice and squishy. So, although it doesn't look very substantial, it actually is. And it was a pleasure to make. And there goes my earring. There we go. Um, so, I have to be honest as well, I can't remember what the quantity was on that. Uh, I'm guessing that it was more than one skein. Maybe, I don't know though, maybe not, maybe not. Um, I'll have to find out and put the information into the show notes for you. It might have only been one skein each, actually. Anyway, how cool is that? So you could totally make something like that with like that and that. It would look awesome. Or that and that would be absolutely gorgeous. Or like, and then like you could do fingerless mittens to match or like maybe you want that around your neck but then if you're feeling a bit more practical and you do lots of dog walking and get mucky like I do you might want to make your fingerless mittens in that you could add a little trim around there to match your cowl uh, so basically the upshot is that the possibilities are in fact endless and before I go I'll just show you this little guy um, because He's so cute. This is Itty Bitty Bat. I really can't remember who by, but again, we'll pop a link up. I think he's meant to hang upside down, but that kind of seems a shame, doesn't it? Oh. So yeah, he he. I made him last year. He sits on our mantelpiece. Um, during October and November. And I, I want to make, I mean, this is Nate before ply rather than the Rosedale. So I've got, we've got Nate before ply coming as well soon. And I've done um, this color in the minis and other dark colors so that you can make spooky little things like this if you want. So that's coming soon. Um, but you, obviously you could make him in one of these. Um, so, right. Okay, I promise I'm finishing now other things that i just need to mention uh liz cork is having a sale that's cork with me on the end by the way so she's having a sale on at the moment so check that out um it's it's relevant to us because she's used our yarn in a lot of her designs and we really like her work um so just thought i'd give that mention what else have we got oh yes uh right and this is why it came onto my radar because She's released um, some fingerless mittens called Cyclamen fingerless mittens in... Oh, was that look Liz Cork? No! That's, oh, sorry. God, I hope they're not watching. That, that absolutely murder me. Um, no, this is uh, Sophie McCain. Unicorn Knits, I think. Definitely, there's definitely a unicorn in the name. Um, they're called Cyclamen Mitts and she's used um, Titus 4-ply. They're really, really pretty. I can see them in my head, but I've just forgotten. I just, I forget who's who, I have to be honest. I'm, I'm just, you know, my brain is full of fluff. Um, so, right, Liz Cork's having a sale. Sophie McCain has released uh, Cyclamen Mitts in Titus 4-ply. They are really nice. Um, what else do we have? Coming up, right, in order of service, we have, coming soon, Carlisle fingering um, that's all dyed up and twisted and waiting to be photographed there are some spook actually quite a few spooky colourways and uh, yes I'm quite excited to bring those to you uh, Nate before ply after that again uh, autumnal and spooky colourways included Pendle Aaron uh, I'm dying that at the moment that's in progress um, so I've gone for some, I'm going for some spooky colourways, but also kind of 
gloomy wintry sort of things um i mean I, you know i always i always include lighter colors too um like in summer i always include darker colors too but it's fun to do these seasonal things and kind of be inspired by that so so that's why really then after the pendle Aaron, we've got hate and four ply coming next uh, there's barely any left it was out of stock all summer um we had issues with stock because of covid we still are doing but anyway we're getting through it after that then we've got eldwick lace coming again not done an update of that for absolutely ages so that's long overdue so that's the mohair and um a thing that we've got in progress which will be going on sale in i think november like throughout november or till it sells out is our festive christmas box that is happening again this year um so it's based around um ellen sheck who makes project bags for us um so then i dye the yarn inspired by the the project bag we've got two designers on board one knitting one crochet who are um working on patterns specifically for the for the box which is really exciting um so yeah and there'll be tea included i i think we usually do there'll be some i don't know how much i'm allowed to say um there'll be something else which is being specially made i'm just gonna leave it at that for now and any other treats that i can possibly find that i can put in i will put in because i love doing these boxes it's uh it's such a fun, it's such fun it's such a delight to kind of like be like oh what can i put in them what gifts can i give people and all that kind of thing and then i was like you need to stay within the budget and i'm like oh really do i go um so yeah they'll be going on sale in november there were i think we're doing 60 i'm sure that's how many we said um so obviously it's quite a limited number but uh yeah hopefully enough for everybody and i think that's all i'm actually getting a sore throat now from all the talking um what i found is that i think because of for the whole of lockdown i've, I've been working at home on my own and my staff are all working from home now as well i actually very rarely talk at all for for this length of time you know at this point it's i think it's about an hour and a half uh sorry and um yeah if if i talk very much i get a sore throat now um so that's weird isn't it but anyway this whole year has been just bizarre who could have thought that we would that this would all this would happen um it's just the last thing especially when you start a business you, you know you don't exactly think i wonder if one day i might have to get through a pandemic mm, not really on the radar um anyway we're still here and that is it is entirely thank you to you so thank you we are very very grateful and it still amazes me i have to be honest anyway before i uh, get too gushy and whilst well, now that my throat really really hurts i will call it a day and i've just spotted a red kite flying around outside so that's quite fun um and yeah i shall go and get togged up and get the dogs out next i think see you later